Hello. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is about William Blake's poem The Sick Rose. We will discuss the summary and analysis of the poem. So let's start the video. About the poem The Sick Rose by William Blake is a two stanza poem that is separated into two sets of four lines or quatrains. These quatrains follow a consistent rhyme scheme that conforms to the pattern of ABCB diff. This very even pattern contributes to the overall tone of the text. It helps foster a feeling of dread as if something is going terribly wrong. Summary The poem begins with the speaker telling the rose that she is sick. This sickness is caused by the invisible worm. The phallic-shaped worm comes to the rose at night in the middle of the howling storm. There is a real sense of danger and dread in these lines that only builds as the poem progresses and Blake makes use of enjambment. In the second stanza of the sick rouse, the worm finds the rose's bed. The rose is afflicted with the worm's dark secret love and has its life destroyed. In the first stanza of the poem, the speaker begins by addressing the rose. Blake chose to capitalize the word rose in order to give it more agency and relate it more to an animate being. This makes sense when one considers the larger metaphor the lines are alluding to. He tells the rose that it is sick. This is a very broad term, and it is unclear at first how or why a rose would be sick. The next lines provide the answer. There is one main reason for the sickness, the invisible worm. It is not something that is easily imagined, considering that it flies in the night. But, the general shape and the fact that it is, by Blake's estimation, hurting the rose, is what's important. The phallic-shaped worm comes to the rose at night in the middle of the howling storm. There is a sense of danger and dread in these lines that adds to one's knowledge that the worm is not going to do anything good to the rose. The howling storm is an interesting image at this point in the piece. By adding this tidbit about the setting, it is clear Blake wants the reader to know that the worm is able to make it through dangerous conditions. It can find the rose whenever it wants to. Perhaps this has something to do with its invisibility. A feature that is also linked to its ability to get close to the worm. It might not seem like such a danger at first. In the second stanza of the sick rouse, the speaker goes detail by detail, increasing the tension. First, he states that the worm found the rose's bed. This refers to the natural dirt flower bed, but more importantly to an actual bed in which a woman, represented by the rose, is sleeping. The bed is described as being of crimson joy. The redness of the rose and the bed both speak to the passion and at the same time, anger and even blood. All three of these connect to the larger metaphor, the loss of a woman's virginity. The rose is afflicted with the worm's dark secret love and has its life destroyed. Again, these lines could refer to the actual death of a real rose that is eaten by a worm. But, the extended metaphor is more important. 